Hi there. In the previous section, we secured our website with Spring Security using simple authentication. In this section, we're going to decorate uploaded images with user data. These videos will show how to add ownership to our domain model, and then we'll be able to link the user session data to an image automatically before storing it. In this video, we're going to update our domain model, allowing the concept of image ownership to be tracked. We'll create a new user entity and a corresponding user repository. We'll then create a Spring Security User Detail Service implementation, leveraging our repository, and hook it into our security configuration. And with that in place, we'll be able to preload some user data. Now, the cornerstone of any security system is to model a user, and to operate within Spring Security, we need a username, a password, and a list of roles. So let's go ahead and create a new class and we'll call this one user. Okay, now something I want to point out here is uh, you know, we have, our, we have a, a username, a password, and a list of roles for everyone to have, as well as we have to have a primary key. Uh, something that's important to point out is, uh, in this video, we're not going to deal with password encryption, though if you actually go to production, do not store your passwords in the clear. All right, with that, let's go ahead and flesh out our repository. We're going to create the... Uh, yeah, JPA requires a default empty constructor, and we're going to leave that one private so it's not in general use by other people. So instead, we're going to create a public one with all the attributes we want people to use. All right, let's round this out with some uh, getters and setters. All right, okay. Now to support all the operations that we're planning to do, we need to create a corresponding user repository. That usually provides most of the operations we need. However, we do need one special operation. We need find by username. This will let us look up a user instance purely based upon the username. And this is a, a key feature that we'll need when we wire this into Spring Security. Now to interact with Spring Security, there's a simple interface called, called User Details Service. Essentially, a user detail service is meant to do one job, and that is load a user by their user name. And this essentially lets us hook into all kinds of solutions. So what we're going to do is actually leverage our Spring Data repository that we just built. So we'll call it our Spring Data User Details Service. So we here, you know, we've got a stubbed out copy here. Let's first, uh, let's get a, create a constructor. And then we can get a hold of our user data repository. And then we use a little constructor injection. And we can auto wire. All we have to do is flag it as a spring component and it'll be automatically picked up. Now, having a hold of our user repository, we can now get down here and code the meat of this operation. So, now something yet. I need to point out throughout this thing is we have both our user uh, domain object we just created, but Spring Security has its own user, so we need to be sure that we're using the correct one. So off the cuff, we're going to go use our repository and use that finder we just coded, find by username, to look up one of our domain objects user. However, we need to map this user object into a user details. If we check, there's a nice concrete instance of this right here called a user. Remember, we just mentioned that. So, I'm going to say create a new user, but in this case, I'm going to use the user details user. And because we have two different users in the same uh, class, you know, Java's going to sit there and expand this one out to a full path here. So, the constructor call for user is pretty simple. It accepts a username, a password, and a list of granted authorities. So we can use our user object to use up, look up the uh, username and password. However, in order to get an array of granted authorities, we're going to use a little uh, Java 8 streaming here. So let's go. 
So let's stream the roles and do a little map. There's a simple granted authority. And let's go collect that into a list. Now, my D is going to nicely point out that uh, I can return replace this Lambda expression with a method reference. So we'll go ahead and do that. All right, so now I'm set. Basically, I've got a user detail service for Spring Security that is leveraging our Spring Data Repository to do all the, all the heavy lifting for us. So with that in place, let's go over to our security configuration and make some adjustments. Now, perhaps you remember in the previous section, we loaded up a set of in-memory users. Well, we're going to go tweak this up and call this, you know, configure JPA-based users. All right, it's uh, injected. Let's uh, we need our Spring Data User Details Service. We'll call it User Details Service. Now, what I'm going to do is rip out all this code and actually use the User Details Service method. And I can just simply plug that in. Now, tell me, is that not a lot simpler than what we used to have? Now, one other facet is I'm going to make sure we flip on web security just to be sure it's in place there. Now with that in place we should be able to go in and actually uh, uh, preload some data. Now previously we had it loaded right down here in this in its predecessor here. Now we have to load up our database. Uh, if we hop over to the image service class that we built, you may remember at the bottom of it we had this command line run, runner. It was involved in doing setup operations. What we're going to do is expand the scope of what this thing is meant to do. We're going to ask for a copy of our user repository. And let's co create a couple users. Let's slide this over to make it a little easier to read. Uh, yes, we need to tweak our constructor call because it's a little incomplete. I'm going to make this like that, so we don't have to, there, we can pass it like that. And let's create a count for uh, represent Rob here. Okay, and so last tweak, I'm going to go rename this repository as image repository, so it's patently clear what two of these are. Okay, now with all this in place, we should be able to test out these accounts. So let's flip over to the browser and uh, give it a whirl here. First. First, we're going to launch our application here. Okay, now we can go to the browser. Now it bounces us over to the login page, and so we'll let's log in with Greg Turnquist. And we're in. You know, we've got the same information up here. Now we should be able to, if we log out, we ought to be able to log in uh, as Rob. There we go, and Rob has role user. You know, last time we had some uh, other accounts that we tried, but we didn't carry those over in this setup, so we just have those two accounts. We can definitely verify we're not using the old stuff. Okay, now for review, in this video, we've added user data to the domain, and we created a Spring Security user detail service. This way we can leverage that our new repository to actually do the heavy lifting where, when Spring Security has to interact with this data. And then we went ahead and preloaded our user table with some test accounts.